Okay, so the next step is going to be entering a time and a location. Now, we have already entered those times and those locations. Um, sometimes you might have a class that is given on different times uh, on, on mul multiple locations. So basically what we want here is to get a drop down that shows us only the times that this history class is being given on this particular date. So we want the time again to be a conditional value list um, that, and the conditions are these two here basically and then when we enter time the location is going to be again a conditional value list based on three conditions uh, that we have entered here because a history class on this date on a certain time uh, probably will only have one certain location so let's uh, maybe it has multiple locations so um, we'll see about that let's go to file manage database and see if we can figure this one out what we're going to need is another um, attend another table occurrence of the class details because the class de details that's where the time and location are stored let's copy this one and let's try and see if we can come up with a good name for this one shall we class details attendance uh, let's call it attendance time because this one is going to be used to get to the time uh, maybe we can move all of these over a little bit over this way so that we can make all of this uh, stuff a little more organized we can hit these boxes here so they become a little smaller this one can go here these can actually be made smaller as well and then they can go here too Oops. so let's get organized a little okay class details attendance time what were the two conditions for this value list that was the class ID and the date so basically when I'm on the attendance record I want the date and the class to be um, related to this this needs to be the same the ones that I see in here can only be for that date and that class now I can get the time from here um, let's try if we can figure that one out let's go to the time box here let's go to data let's make this a drop down list let's make a new one this is going to be um, classes do I need to call this classes? no let's call this uh, uh, tendence time Let's use the values from what field shall we use? Let's make this class details attendance time. Correct, that's the one we need. And we need the time for this one. Very simple. One very important thing is that we want to include only the related values starting from attendance again. Let's see if this kind of works already. The time for the 12th. 12.9, the history, what do we get? Nothing. Okay, let's see here, layout, lay classes, history, 12.9, aha, there is no history on 12.9, let's see if that may have something to do with it. There is only English, aha, and there is only English at 9 o'clock. Let's select another date, of 13 here, let's select English, and there is only 10 o'clock. <laughs> And let's select another date, the 15th, history, and 15. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Uh, now we can only select from the drop downs. Um, it's a little bit strange looking now because you already have uh, data entered. If you have no data in here and you make a new record on a certain date, then you can only select history and only the 15 o'clock. So if you make a new record, we put this on a different date, the 13, we select history, we select the 1300 hours. So basically that's usually what we're going to be doing because when you create a new record here for a new attendance, um, that's kind of what you're going to be doing. So now we need to add the location, which is basically more of the same. We're going to go to File, Manage Database and make another... another... Um, another table occurrence let's make another table occurrence based on this one 
let's click those two little green arrows here and this one can be double clicked because it's not for the time this is for the location and we're going to create a different kind of relationship this is going to be the same uh, this needs to be the same class on the same date but also for that particular time so looking pretty nice let's make this smaller this one as well and let's put them all here in fact let's put them all just a tiny little bit closer there looking good uh, let's make that drop down box as well let's make this a drop down list with a new value list this is going to be attendance um, uh, attendance location let's use values from the field let's use them from the location class details attendance location here is going to be location include only the related values starting from attendance okay 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 and let's see if we can figure this one out room l14 let's see if uh, that's correct do we have a history on the 15th at 1500 hours in room l14 uh, history the 15th 1500 hours room l14 this is looking pretty darn good let's select another one or let's go to another record because i had multiple records here uh, 39 history location auditorium looking pretty good so now we can just make a new record uh, and select one class there is only one class that date there's only one time that this class is given and there's in one certain room okay actually you can this one this last one it does not have to be a drop down list it could maybe also be a um, uh, simple uh, lookup for uh, one for that one uh, particular room but um, well that's something you're gonna have to figure out yourself if you might have multiple locations um, at the same time then you do want this to be a drop down because if you let's try that out let's create in the lay classes let's uh, for instance on the 15th here um, we're gonna have at 1500 hours we're gonna have the same class given by another teacher in room um, G17 for instance so let's see the 15th history let's see if we can do this um, we have do we have one already okay here the history uh, at 1500 hours ah, see now we have two rooms that is a possibility that's a uh, something that could happen that probably depends on your specific uh, situation so now this is good this is done let's start adding some students let's make this layout a little bit bigger and again as before we're going to add a portal here let's make it about yay big and this is going to be a portal showing the attendance detail which is going to be the students attending this particular class um, we're going to allow the deletion because if a student accidentally gets entered we want to be able to delete it if we have a many we need a scroll bar um, let's do that what do we need the student the timestamp do we need to show this on the layout yeah let's show it so we can see it's there and the calculation for late which we haven't made yet we can make that now we're going to add it it's all looking a little bit big but um we'll make it a little smaller there let's uh, move this one over a bit all right something like this we're going to need to uh, be able to create uh, we, we need to be, be able to delete records but let's do that another way now let's create a little button here and let's call it let's make a button let's make that a delete portal row button and when we click OK the cursor is blinking here let's call this delete ads to Like this, something like this. If uh, sometimes, if you want to kind of uh, move something around in detail and you can't see it, you can always use the bottom here to zoom in, and zoom into something, and then you can use your uh, arrows to kind of uh, nudge something around if you want. Oof. 
Uh, I don't want to make this a bit smaller. Yeah, something like so. If you click this 400 here, it'll show you the real size again. Okay, so now we can, we are still missing some labels here. We're going to use the text tool to create some student, make some labels here. Uh, the, we're going to need to enter the student name here. Then this is going to be time of creation. Or basically, um, is there a better way to describe this? Well, let's leave this for now. Um, and this one is going to be late. Very simple. Let's uh, put this one is good. Let's put this one here. Let's use the snapping. There, something like this. Okay, now we need to add students. How do we do that? Uh, very simple. Let's make this a drop, uh, not a drop down calendar, but a drop down list for students. Let's make a new one. Students, and we want to use values from a field from the students um, table. We want to use the ID and the full name. Let's show values only from second field which is the full name and then let's see if this already uh, works yes brilliant we have Jane Doe and as soon as we select her this is the time uh, that she entered this class um, we still have to make this one and basically um, what this needs to calculate is that if the time of creation the time in the time of creation if this time is um, later than this time then she's late very simple so basically we have a time stamp here so this uh, contains both the date and the time but we can extract the time from here and then we can compare that to the time we have here let's go to control shift D or file manage database let's go into our attendance detail and let's double click this uh, late calculation let's see i think we're going to need uh, let's go and have a quick peek at the time functions here um, 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 um. Our time. can we extract the time from a timestamp timestamp date time might look a little difficult now let's uh, let's do it really simple. If uh, in fact, what we could do is we could make a uh, timestamp. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, we can make a timestamp of the of the class um, date and time. So what we can do is we can use timestamp here. We can say if the date is going to be of the attendance table date and the time is going to be time so we have the timestamp for the, the class and we need to compare this one to the timestamp for the class detail um, but it's not coming from is it coming from the class detail no from the attendance detail uh, 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 yes, current table attendance detail. So we need to compare this one, this timestamp, timestamp creation, basically if this one is larger than the timestamp for the class, then the student is late, very simple. Let's make this an if statement. If the timestamp of creation is larger than the timestamp of the class, and then the student is late. Otherwise, there is no value there. If you are uh, want to use uh, calculations here, you can go in here, show all functions by name. If you hit the I, here you will get to the if. If you double click the if, let's go and make this one a little lower see if you do this you can get some help in making uh, calculations if you want to use the if then you can see if uh, this is uh, here you put the test and then you get a result one and a result two you need to separate them with these uh, 
how do you call that a semicolon uh, and you need to put that between brackets if you you want you can use this little help and if you use this little help then you will see that if uh, the timestamp of creation for the student's attendance is larger than the timestamp of the attendance I think this isn't right oh no this is right let's let's just try it out and let's just see what happens uh, the calculation result is going to be a text and let's see what this gives shall we um, pu -pu -pu. let's create this one for John though Boom. this does nothing why not because the students are not late this class is on the 15th let's go to another class let's go for the class of the 12th which is today today is English at 9 o'clock in the morning that's already passed um, so let's add him and let's see aha he's late and he's late as well because the time of creation here is at nine o'clock in the evening but the class is at nine o'clock in the morning nine o'clock and 21 o'clock um, we don't have a.m. p.m. here where I come from so basically these people are late so basically what we did was cre uh, compared the uh, timestamp of the creation of this record to the timestamp of the class and then we can see which student enters too late or not it's just a simple idea. You don't have to use this if you don't want to, if it's not useful for you. But it could be, it could be handy. Okay, this is already good. If, for instance, a certain student wasn't there, you can delete this again. And an annoying thing here is that you can't see the student's name. So let's fix that again with the trick we already used before. Let's control drag to copy this one. And let's see. First of all, let's cancel this. Did we? already relate these things we haven't I think yet. we haven't made a relationship yet to these um, no because this is the original attendance detail table occurrence and it is not yet related to do to the student table so let's uh, make another table occurrence as you can see if we would have just made a relationship from here to here then we would have created a bit of a mess so let's do this let's call this student attendance details and let's relate the student ID FK to the ID here boom looking good so now we can control drag this field use the students attendance details get the C full name make this in edit box visible in fine mode but not in browse mode and for this one is going to be in browse mode but not in fine mode let's see if this works already and there's a little error a little bug in FileMaker that you might want to know about if we uh, immediately put these two fields on top of each other like so and we go and exit the layout then you will see that oh yes it works and we're gonna add John Doe oh, it works as well let's add another one oh yeah it seems to be working sometimes this doesn't work and then you have to go back to edit layout kind of move this one over a one little nudge and then you can go in here and go back in here but it's kind of stupid that I'm doing this now because now it was working maybe um, maybe it only is a bug sometimes okay uh, we don't need these because we have these names multiple times now okay so the ID would be normally speaking that you enter a, that you create a new record on a certain date uh, this is today's date you have a certain class an English class it's in nine, at nine o'clock in the morning and it's in room 103 and then basically uh, if you want to use barcodes you use a barcode scanner to start scanning um, students and have them show up in here now I don't have a barcode scanner or I don't have an iPod or iPad uh, there are certain ways to work with uh, QR codes and barcode scanners on these devices but that's gonna be a um, question to someone else because I don't have really a way to test this stuff out uh, this is really simple really basic I hope this was a little bit clear and this is basically a good maybe a good start or a good idea of, of how you would go about creating a attendance taking situation like this.